What's going on guys? T2RX6 here back for another Mass Effect toy review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Wave 2, or Series 2, uh, Mass Effect figures. And I just wanted to leave, I left Garrus in the packaging here. It's essentially the same as the uh, old packaging. You just have uh, Mass Effect 3 written in the top and, and embossed there. Um, there's the back of the package. Again, this is already open. And we'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, inside the package on every one of these is a card with a code on it, similar to this one. And, uh, yeah, I've already redeemed these codes. What you end up getting are collector's packs for uh, Mass Effect, the online multiplayer. And actually what they are is stuff to, you know, unlock stuff in the game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they're all basically sub-veteran packs, so the best you can get is uh, uncommons. Uh, as far as I've seen, I don't know what would happen if you've unlocked all your uncommons. Uh, after I unlocked the commons, I just quit and went straight for the uh, Spectre packs. So, I've already opened Garrus. I'm going to just take this on out. And like I said, we'll come back to this after. So, while we're doing this, I figured I would start with my least favorite and go to my favorite. Um, so let's just get started. So every one of them comes exactly like the previous ones where you get one of these horrible bases that has this little peg that just loves to come out on a lot of them because they're not glued in properly. You get, of course, the figure and they all come with one gun. So I said I was going to go in the order of my least favorite to most favorite and here we go. We'll start with Miranda. Now, the first thing that was really disappointing is that she comes with another M4 shrunken, shrinken, however you say that word. Uh, essentially, yeah, you get the same thing that Thane carried, which is a disappointment already because I liked these figures for the added weaponry that you can give the Shepard. So to get a second one of these is a bit disappointing. I know she used submachine guns, but it's just very disappointing that she gets the same one. There's there's at least six of them to choose from. Um, this one disappoints me a lot. Now she does have probably the best arms of any of these toys. But if you were expecting to come from DC Direct to uh, this line and see some greater articulation, sorry it's not here. These are again statues with a lot of worthless articulation. Um, Miranda also has Apparently from Mass Effect 2 to Mass Effect 3 become clinically depressed and so she's always looking down like this. Now her head is on a ball joint and you can put it back but her hair is in the way and it entirely blocks that movement. Uh, you can turn it left and right if you can get her hair past things. That's about as far to her left as she's going to look and you get a little more articulation to the right but it still doesn't help you raise or lower the hair. Some of this black paint you can see here is already rubbed off on mine. Uh, the arms, like I said, best part. They go out full 360. They do have an upper rotation, a decent elbow, and a wrist rotation. She's got no hip articulation. She's got, well, this is as far back as her legs can go, and then she can move them forward like that. There's no in and out on her legs, so she's stuck like that. And she's got this knee articulation, which is worthless because you can't do anything with her knees, so, or with her legs, aside from that, so you can give her some really stupid looking running poses, I suppose. Yeah, and besides that, I don't like, and it may not show up on camera too well, her face is a different color than her chest here, so she just looks odd, and her eyes are off, which is something I expect on action figures, I guess, but I don't know, still disappointing. The other thing is, to get all these suit details, they, you can tell they did a paint wash on them, but then you get down to the lower spots and the paint wash was way too heavy, you have extra paint just lying around. 
So again, you just have a figure that makes a pretty good statue. He's looking pretty depressed at this point. And before we go on, as noted, she does come with the M4 shrunken. She can, or Shepard can hold every weapon that comes in this set. So, let's move on to Morden. Now, I really like the paintwork they did on Morden. I don't feel that his paintwork is sloppy, like uh, Miranda's there. Morden comes with the M5 Phalanx pistol. And he holds it pretty nice. It's pretty nicely detailed. Um, looks like it's got some of the extensions from Mass Effect 3 going on. Uh, in terms of his articulation, we'll take him off this little base. You do have some head on a ball joint uh, at the bottom of the neck, so his neck never really looks all that strange when he's looking around. You can look all the way around 360 there. His arms are on some strange kind of ball joint, so you can kind of get a little bit of movement out of them back and forth. They will rotate all the way around though very, very stiffly. Uh, he does have the upper rotation. Again, the elbow. No wrist. And it's interesting. I don't know if the details are really going to pick this out. But he's got a hollow arm with almost what looks like pistons inside there. I really can't get... There you go. You can kind of see it there. Really weird. And I don't remember... I, I guess I never paid attention to see if he had that. No waist. Uh, the coat here is a like flexible material, but it's not coming off of the figure. It's glued in place. Uh, he can move his legs forward and back a little, but you're hindered by his coat. Um, his legs have very minor articulation in terms of the knees. You're not going to get him back any further, but you can put him as far as like that. No foot or anything. The only thing that it's really good for is if you want to give him a walking, sort of walking pose, you can use that articulation to kind of stagger his legs like that. But, yeah, the paintwork and everything's really nice on Morden here. And let's put him back on this little base here. And then we'll give him back his little phalanx gun and we'll stick him back here with Miranda who's still looking very very depressed she didn't get a big role in the game next is Legion and I really rather like how Legion looks and I just knocked over my light <laughs> so let's see if I can get any better detailing here you can see his eye is painted with that blue He's got some great blue speckles inside to show all the circuitry. I really like that. He does come with the Mantis gun though, which is very strange. Because uh, I always assumed that the uh, Widow was more his gun. But fortunately that comes with Garrus. But yeah, you do get the Mantis here. Pretty nicely detailed. Um, no writing on it or anything to denote what it is. But... It's a nice representation of the gun. Now, this is why I wanted to bring up this piece of paper again. So notice on the back how Legion is holding the Mantis, where he's got kind of that one arm forward and he's holding it, you know, kind of like you would when you're just holding a sniper rifle at a stationary position. Well, time to discuss articulation, I suppose. As we recalibrate some lighting here. His arm cannot move in a position that he can get that pose. There's no rotation in and out to, to facilitate that. If this arm could swivel here inwards, you totally could pull that off. But as it stands, there's just nothing you can do. He does have the antenna piece. You have to plug it in when you get him. It's a separate piece. In terms of articulation here, his head can go side to side but you're limited by these hoses they can only go so far and I really wouldn't stress it too much otherwise you're gonna end up breaking them that goes for the arms too they can go in and out and rotate but again are limited by the hose he's got a nice elbow a nice wrist swivel but ultimately 
it amounts to almost nothing because he can't hold his sniper rifle like they depict. This arm is a little bit more limited because of the shoulder armor. Again, it moves like that. Elbow, wrist. We get to the waist, we have a waist swivel, which is nice. Legs wouldn't be so bad. No in and out, of course, just forward back. But you can only forward back them about that far before you end up putting up a pretty decent amount of strain on these hoses and just look how that moves at the part where it's glued it just looks like if you really mess with that too much it's going to end up breaking for the knee articulation you can fold it back like that but there's no reason that you would do that so again you're left with a very nice looking statue now unlike some of the other ones this guy has a really nice paint job so I can kinda you know give get away with him being a little more statue like because it looks like something I wouldn't mind just showing on my shelf just cuz he just is a really solid looking figure all around the paint apps are very nice so we'll put him back and we'll get to Garrus, who I opened, who would have been my favorite if his hand wasn't broken off in the box. So I'm going to have to call and see if I can get that fixed. But the way he was held in, you couldn't tell. But as soon as you got him out of the plastic, this fell off on its own. Uh, which stinks, because that is his sniper rifle holding hand, which he holds really well. Again, you got the Widow here, and it's a very nice incarnation of the Widow. It's definitely got the most paint apps of any of the guns. Now, I think in these sets, they always pick one who gets better articulation and better detailing. In this case, it's quite clearly Garrus. He's got a lot of face paint on him. Uh, his eyes look a little bit funny, but not too bad considering the size. The armor has that really nice chewed up spot from uh, Mass Effect 2 all the way through the back there. And it's just really, really nicely detailed all around. Um, he has the articulation that resembles Shepard's the most as he's got in and out movement here. Not much, but it suffices. He's going to 360, he's got an upper swivel, he's got an elbow, and he's got a wrist. Again, he has all that articulation on the other side, too. You also have the waist, you have the forward back legs, which still suck because they're not ball joints, and you got the knees. So you did a really, really good job with him, comparatively to the rest of the wave. It's just too bad that his wrist is broken right out of package on mine. So, <laughs> hopefully yours is not broken when you get yours. So, we'll take him. We'll just put him back, and uh, unfortunately he's not going to hold his widow, but we can put them here. And so here is your Wave 2 set. And they look, of course, very nice if you want to kind of stagger them out here a little bit. And we'll put... Garrus next to Shepard because Shepard can hide his busted arm and we'll put Tali on the other side because Tali in my game is the one who's with Shepard then we'll put Morden Miranda does not like holding her pistol very well and that's a, again a problem with a lot of these figures is they don't Miranda's depressed because she's out of the game, so we're going to put her over here looking sad. We'll put Legion right here, looking all kinds of awesome. Grunt will toss in the back. And I guess Thane can kind of work his way in over here. I really don't want to block Morden. I probably could have spaced this out a little bit nicer. So yeah, they look really nice on the shelf together uh, if you want to display them together. But I still am very, very disappointed when it comes to the articulation. Now, 
I don't understand why we can't get articulation like something like this, which is roughly the same size, but a little bit more expensive. And that's where you got, you know, the standard stuff. Ball joints here, you know, knees here, rotation joints, ankle tilts, you know, arm swivels. The whole nine yards, you know, you can really get a lot more looks out of him. And you can even do it with, you know, something a bit cheaper, usually. Whoops. And your figure arts, which are just great little pieces of articulation. And, you know, I'm, I can see where you say, okay, well, these guys are 16, something like this. A non-special version is like 30 or so. That's fine and all, but when you come to something like $10 Marvel Legends toys, which have all this great articulation comparatively, it'd just be nice to see some of this basic articulation to be able to do something with the legs besides standing depressed or, you know, whatever they're doing. And that's disappointing when it comes to these figures. So, the codes in the pack didn't net me anything good. Again, I'll put a slide at the end here showing exactly what I got. Um, yeah, they're nice desktop uh, shelf display type pieces. I could see myself really getting into having all these guys on my desk at work, but they're not action figures and they're not fun action figures. They're just nice display pieces for the most part. So, this is T2RX6, I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I will see you at the normal time.